We are here in St. George, Utah. When I hear Utah, I think Mormons. And St. George does not disappoint. This is the visitor center. Can I come in? Let me give you a little tour. I'm excited to see her return. If she gets out. Utah was very designed by Mormon culture. Everyone is overly friendly. Kind of like, what's going on? Friendly. The theme was Desert Divas. Diego Montoya and his team came up with this cactus-inspired look. I wanted a gown. I wanted something that just felt gorgeous and beautiful and like Met Gala runway ready. I love a good shoulder out. I love extra volume. I love a slit. It has the cactus orange flowers on it. If you zoom in, you can see the thorns on the cactus are actually made of zip ties. If you touch one, you will get poked because the way that they're cut on a diagonal angle gives a little prick at the end. In addition, Diego created like a disguising leaf that I could whoop. It was fabulous. The wig was inspired by the beautiful sunsets of the desert. So the hair is this beautiful orange and red, like coif creation to go with the gown. But also, Gloria put these flowers on the ends of these amazing spikes that kind of stuck into the foam pieces of the wig. So they didn't go nowhere when I was doing all this. The jewelry is made by Rocks by Cox. And she created these beautiful pieces that go right along with the look. I'm talking earrings, ring. Oh, baby, I was ready. So I wanted to accentuate the leg to deliver it you got to have that long heel. And Diego and his team like custom covered it and made it really fabulous to go with the entire look. And I was even able to walk up onto the boulder rocks and through the red dirt. Professional. I really wanted to do these topaz crystals. So Domino and the team made the really huge stones coming off my shoulder and off my hip. It's a little heavy, but I felt so regal. Abdil made this really cool hair. I think he actually wrapped pool noodles in hair. And this asymmetrical hair piece going off in one direction. And the makeup that Layla McQueen did on this episode is intricate, so cool. And a lot of that jewelry was made by hand. Sharon, who's on my design team, actually took these stones and like wired them into these like ring bases. I felt very stunning that day. I wanted to be the time of way the stringy, barky plants, really all these browns and these golden reds. And we went really avant-garde with the look in general. So we wanted to do a lot of drama up top. I wanted to be kind of nude in it. We added like a little panty strap to give it a little sex appeal. I wanted to be like a nature goddess, really. Wigs and Grace made this incredible styrofoam ball updo that was very elaborate and just styled right and pulled back with a nice bang. It was just gorgeous in this like honey yellow blonde. We went really drapey with the fabric so that they would flow in the wind and give drama and made like succulent shoulder pieces that were rhinestone. The makeup I did myself on this episode, I wanted to give a super dramatic look and I added like a really long golden eyelashes to it made out of vinyl and just took the makeup as large as it could go. I felt like the busier we made it all, maybe the more it could blend in a moment. All the way down to my nice clear, high heeled gorgeous pumps, but they also had like rock designs up the front to look like they weren't really heels, it was just like the plant. Again, jewelry by Rocks by Cox. I had my custom nails by Cousin Queen Claws. It was art, but nature art, you know? Our looks are all very cohesive but all having a very unique perspective. These pictures should be on the cover of Vogue magazine. And then Utah was definitely very harsh when it came to our show. They did everything they could to try to close our show down. We took all the proper channels to get approved. All of a sudden we hear that the permit is going to be revoked. They called a special city council meeting and then to the surprise of us, so many people in that community showed up to that city council meeting. They packed the room and said, this is not right. You should allow these drag queens to have their show. And we finally get word that the permit did not get pulled. And now we're putting on a show. Micah identifies as non-binary, and Micah uses they, she, and he pronouns. I love that. Micah wanted to really play with gender, so we have them in this almost like a Tina Belcher-style wig with this huge, over-the-top housewifey dress. But then Micah turns around, and you see this amazing mustache. And then, of course, they throw off that and have this, like, Freddie Mercury-esque look underneath. 
and they had just recently had top surgery. It must have felt really nice to be out there, you know, with your chest out, and like on this stage and celebrating yourself and your gender identity and your expression. I also wanted to play with androgyny, but I wanted to really split it down the middle. And I had a chance to do a face that was like literally half in drag. And Gloria really turned this wig out. Cause it's not just like it's all swept to one side. Somehow she figured out how to like make this wig almost like it was cut down the middle with like a jigsaw. Really, really impressive. So one side of the outfit is a suit, it's like jazzy, sparkly suit. The other side is this checkerboard gown. I also got to put on a little bit of a mustache myself, which felt very, very nice. And I spent half as much time in the makeup chair. So I think we all won here. My drag son, Tony, he was brilliant in stepping forward and saying, you know, Shangela, this is who I am as a trans person. I want to showcase that in my community. So a big part of the visual inspiration for the performance with Tony was Tony's art. And we went through his sketchbook and Diego was like, I can incorporate these into like some of the art for the visual. So let's take this look, right? Tony's in that generation that loves like Lil Nas X. We want him to be like a king, royal, he's a boss. So Gloria and the team with Wigs and Grace, they designed not only the hairpiece for Tony that was very kingly, but also this crown made out of the same hair that they used for the wig. But he also had a little facial hair. The costume itself, the colors of the gold and the blue and the black and white, the red, everything just pops because it gives you almost in that like French style. It's fabulous. And baby, don't forget me because I look lovely in this one, okay? I'm not really a blue hair girl, but when I saw this on me, I was like, baby, I need to wear more blue hair in the makeup. The mug was so quaffed. I love working with Luscious Massacre. So she had painted both Tony and I in this way that really when you come on stage, you see the mugs, they illuminate all the way to the back. And then you see at the end where they come put the robe on Tony. It just completed the look. Absolutely fabulous. Gabby it was this very politically driven, equal rights, teen girl, bisexual, and had a lot of issues with her church and finding about coming out to her mother that her mother had been hiding back this bisexuality too. So when it came to the costumes, I wanted to come up with something that was conceptual. So I went with witches because obviously being discriminated against because of being different. So we made these cloaks and had a broom to hide the dancers underneath Gabby so that we could do this trick to make her look like she's actually flying in front of the moon, which was beautiful. And of course I wanted to be fun and cute with our looks. So I went with like tiny witch hats with really blown out hair, really cat eyed makeup and big, but like monochromatic. I wanted to pay an homage to the three fairies from Sleeping Beauty. So we went pink, green and blue. And we went really patchwork and really shredded fabrics. And we wanted to do like a halfy to make it a little more young and fun, Monster High inspired, I guess, and sexy. So we gave them leotards and corsets and painted to the back row, down to the witch boot, honey. We were ready to cast the spell of love on this community. The night that we had our show in St. George was the most attendance we've ever had at a drag show in all three seasons of this series. To see 2,000 people in a small community come out in support of the queer community, brilliant. You can't buy that kind of love.